At this point, you're familiar with what the nutrition care process is, and we've talked a little bit about the standardized terminology that's available in your terminology reference manual that you either have a hard copy of or you've purchased an online subscription. So in this presentation, I want to focus a little bit more specifically on the nutrition diagnosis terminology. So to do that, I'm going to shift and pull up the online version of the um, diagnosis terminology manual. But again, if you have a hard copy, the same content is available in that book. So if I log into my ENCPT subscription or open my book as we talked about before it goes through the various areas of the nutrition care process so nutrition assessment nutrition diagnosis intervention and monitoring and evaluation as I mentioned we're going to focus a lot on the nutrition diagnosis area so when you go if you click on the diagnosis section or hover on it to get the drop down you'll see a section that um, well first of all actually let's talk a little bit in general about um, the nutrition diagnosis statements so when we look at creating a nutrition diagnosis. Really what we're talking about here, it's not to be confused with a medical diagnosis, but rather it's what is the nutrition problem that this patient or client or participant has and how can we work with them to improve their outcome in that area. So it's very focused on the scope of practice of the registered dietitian nutritionist. So keep that in mind when we're talking about the nutrition diagnosis. The other question that comes into play is why this specific terminology, why this standardized language? The rationale is that if we all are speaking the same language, then we can make sure that the diagnoses that we choose are clearly understood what that actually represents. So let's go through this in a little bit of detail um, and give a little bit more description. So again, from the diagnosis drop-down menu uh, in the introduction section, there is a, an area that says the nutrition diagnosis statement PES. I'm going to click on that and we'll spend some time on this. I'm going to talk about this straight from the manual because this is what you have reference to. So you can easily refer back to it to go back to this information. And it will be something you'll probably have to revisit a number of times to sort of get the hang of. And we'll have a lot of practice using it. So when we look at the nutrition diagnosis statement, it's referred to as the PES or PES statement. And that stands for problem or the nutrition diagnosis label. And that's actually what you'll find in the standardized terminology. So that problem or nutrition diagnosis label is what you want to use the exact terminology from the manual. And we'll again look at some examples of that. So we start saying what the problem is. Next we go over to the etiology. What etiology means, it's the cause or the underlying issue that's causing the problem. So when we create these PES or nutrition diagnosis statements, we want to say what the problem is, but equally important, we want to articulate what's the root cause of this problem. And really that's often generally what we want to target in our intervention is that root cause so that we can hopefully help that patient overcome the problem. So our statement starts with the nutrition diagnosis, moves to the etiology, and then finally lists the signs and symptoms. So the signs and symptoms, here it's listed as the defining characteristics. So essentially the signs and symptoms are how we look and say, how did we know this person had the problem they had? So let's think about an example. Um, and in this example, I'm not going to use the standardized terminology necessarily because I want you to also get in the habit of thinking through what the issue is without worrying about the terminology to start. And then you can come back and find the terminology that really fits with the problem. The reason I think that's important is I think it's easy to get bogged down with the terminology and forget what we're really trying to do. So let's start with, with just a general idea. And then once you have that in your mind, you can go to the terminology and find the correct terminology and make sure you have the correct terminology. So for example, if someone, if we felt their nutrition problem, so this first area, is something related to their weight. So for example, many patients come in for weight management looking to lose weight. So maybe their problem is being overweight or obese. Then we want to really dig for that etiology. So what's causing that obesity? Do they have um, some sort of a metabolic issue? Do they have some emotional issues around food where they do a lot of comfort eating? Do they have some um, 
environmental issues that are making it very difficult to maintain a healthy weight. So that's where you're looking for that root cause in the etiology. And then in the signs and symptoms, we're trying to figure out well, or trying to articulate, what, how did we know they had this problem? Well, for example, in overweight, generally we know they have the problem because their weight is higher than we would, um, we would want to see for, for the most, typically the better health outcomes. So their, perhaps their body mass index or their percent body fat or their something along those lines. So that's essentially how these PES statements are formulated. Their problem, so what's going on that's, that's a nutrition issue. The etiology, what's causing that nutrition issue. And then the signs and symptoms, how did we know that was a problem? Okay, so let's look a little bit more specifically at the germinology and how to formulate these statements. I'm scrolling down on the page here. Again, I'm using this because this is a really uh, great summary of how to make these statements. So in the middle, you'll see some characteristics of a well-written nutrition diagnosis or PES statement. Essentially, you want to always remember that you're trying to communicate with the rest of the healthcare team. So what you write down and what you develop for a statement, it needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, and it needs to accurately portray what you're trying to say. That's easier said than done sometimes. Um, there's some questions here under the PES that help you evaluate your your PES statements. So as you move forward with practicing this, come back to this area so that you can sort of critique your own statements or um, work with a, with a partner and critique each other's, give each other feedback. So down here gives some examples at the bottom of the screen, gives some examples of how these statements would be put together. So we always start with the nutrition diagnosis. And again, these are the things that are standard terminology that we'll look at a little bit. Then we say that diagnosis is related to, so that's a standard term, and then the etiology, what caused it, as evidenced by, so that's also standardized, and then we list our signs and symptoms. So the first example on this page, the diagnosis is excessive fat intake, and then we say related to limited access to healthful options or frequent consumption of high fat food is what they have listed here as an example. And then as evidenced by, and it lists some of the signs and symptoms that indicated that this particular person has excessive fat intake. So this basic structure will hold true always on your PES statements. It will be the problem related to the etiology as evidenced by the signs and symptoms. So let's look at how you come up with this nutrition diagnosis statement. I'm going to scroll back up the screen um, to our diagnosis drop-down menu. When you look at the nutrition diagnosis reference sheet, this gives a nice overview of, um, of, of some of the nutrition diagnoses. I'm actually going to go back to the main category of diagnosis for just a moment. Um, there is, if you go to the introduction section, towards the bottom in the drop down, there's the nutrition diagnosis reference sheets. I think this is a good place to um, look for the general overview for the reference sheets. These nutrition diagnosis reference sheets will be available for each diagnosis that essentially help you validate whether you've selected the correct diagnosis. If we go up to the diagnosis drop down one more time, if we select the first area that says what is new in this edition related to nutrition diagnoses, you can also select an area that gives you general terminology um, of the nutrition diagnosis, so that top link there. You see the download button here? I would highly recommend downloading and printing this sheet. This is going to give you a two-page document that lists all the specific nutrition diagnoses. So this doesn't give the background, but it's a great way to scan through and look for what you think the diagnosis might be. Then once you have selected one that you think might apply, you can get more details from the terminology manual. One guideline with PES statements, if possible, if the patient has a, a diagnosis that fits within the intake domain, in general, that is a preferred nutrition diagnosis. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going to have that problem or that's necessarily the best, but it's an area that we work with a lot and have a lot of control over in our practice as dietitians. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you're wavering between two diagnoses that you both think would fit the problem, maybe lean towards the intake domain.
So now let's look at how we can get some more details out of the manual. At the top of the screen here, you see the three primary domains. Those are demonstrated on the reference sheet. You can see at the top of the reference sheet, there's the intake domain, and then it lists all these diagnoses that fall in the intake domain. So for example, if I think I have an issue in the intake domain, I can go to the manual or in the book, go to that section of the book and look at these different potential diagnoses. If, for example, I think we, I have, um, I'm working with a patient who has excessive oral intake. So if you look in the second section here, the oral or nutrition support intake, I think maybe they have excessive oral intake. So I'm going to click on that, or if I'm in the book version, I'm going to flip to that page in the book and read what the definition of that is. So here I can see that it's oral food beverage intake that exceeds estimated energy needs, established reference standards, or recommendations based on physiological needs. But the note is that it does not include intake via an oroenteric tube, so if they're on that tube feeding. So there's certain things that you can find here that may help you say, yeah, that's a fit, or no, not really a fit. Um, so once you've decided that you have the appropriate diagnosis, remember this is where you want to use the exact terminology. So in your PES statement, you would say excessive oral intake, that's your diagnosis, related to, then we want to figure out the etiology. Well, the nutrition, um, nutrition diagnosis terminology manual helps you think about some possible etiologies that often might cause this diagnosis. So you see those listed here. It doesn't mean those are the only options and you don't have to use the specific terminology, but this is a great place to help you start thinking, goodness, I think this is the problem, but, but what could really be driving this problem? What's really the underlying cause? So it helps get you thinking in that direction. And then it also lists some typical signs and symptoms that would be ways that you recognize this nutrition diagnosis. So if we were writing a PES statement, again, we start with the definition, or excuse me, the diagnosis, excessive oral intake related to whatever the etiology was. So it might be related to unsupported beliefs or attitudes about food and nutrition as evidenced by, and then our signs and symptoms. So perhaps um, this weight gain that's not attributed to fluid retention or normal growth. So those are just suggestions in the etiology and signs and symptoms, but the nutrition diagnosis terminology must be used as it is, exactly as it's stated. So again, if I click back on the diagnosis area, oops, excuse me, in the diagnosis and then terminology um, drop down. These different domain areas are where you can find more details about each of the diagnoses um, in that particular category. And remember that reference sheet that you can print off to help get you started thinking about what is the appropriate diagnosis for this person. So again, we'll be working a lot with creating PES statements. They're kind of simple in concept and sometimes harder when you actually start writing them. But we'll have lots of practice and hopefully this at least gave you a little bit of an introduction. And again, it always helps to spend a little bit of time clicking through, getting familiar with the resources that you have available in your electronic uh, reference manual or your print reference manual, flipping through that as well.